All right, here we go. We've got a short video over segment postulates. And so a postulate, if you're wondering what that word means, it's something that is obviously true and doesn't need to be proven. And you might be thinking, okay, what, but what's an example? we got a couple examples in the next slide. We're going to um, really, yeah, this one's kind of a definition. It could almost be called a postulate. But the segment addition postulate, if B is between A and C, then AB plus BC equals AC when we're referring to segments. If AB plus BC equals AC, then B is between A and C. This is obviously true and doesn't have to be proven. But if we just think about this, don't be confused by the jumble of letters. If we look over here, it is saying that in a segment like this, and let's have A, B, and C in, in order, that this first part, that length, plus the second part, that length, equals the length of the entire segment. That's kind of a duh thing, right? No one's going to argue with you if you say that. That's why we call it a postulate, okay? For example, if this segment had a length of 3 and this segment had a length of 5, we know that the whole segment has a length of 8. That is a duh thing, so we call it a postulate. Now, let's look down here at our midpoint definition. The midpoint of a segment is the point on the segment that divides it into two congruent segments. Remember, congruent means same length in this situation. So, for example, if B is the midpoint of AC, then AB is congruent to BC, and there's our congruent symbol. That's the idea that if I told you B was the midpoint, then we would know, because B is the midpoint, that the length of AB must be the same as the length of BC. And so those are very simple ideas, but let's kind of see how they flesh themselves out in some geometry problems. Let's look at example one. It says B is between A and C on segment AC. Use the given information to find AB and BC. So I'm going to start by drawing a segment, and I'm going to put points A, points B, and point C. Now this may not be drawn to scale. I don't know that B is roughly in the middle. B could be really close to C or could be really close to A. I have no idea, but my picture doesn't necessarily have to be drawn to scale. So I'm going to be, say AB equals 3X. I'm going to say BC equals X, and they tell me that AC, the entire thing, is 20. Well, Due to our segment addition postulate from a minute ago, we said that the length of AB plus the length of BC equals the length of AC. And so according to my little uh, picture that I've drawn here, we know that AB is 3X, we know that BC is X, or we call it 1X, and that AC is 20. And so by writing out that segment addition postulate and filling in what we know, we have a very simple algebra problem to solve. I can combine those like terms and get 4X is 20, and then divide by 4 on each side and get that x is 5. Well, if x is 5, we can find AB and BC. We know that AB, if AB equals 3x, we know that's really 3 times 5, or 15. So AB has a length of 15 units, and then there's a few different ways we could find BC, but we know BC is x, therefore if we substitute in uh, x equals 5, then we have its length as well. So we know this is 15, and this is 5, and that makes sense because the whole thing is 20. Let's do another example. This one's going to use the, the idea of midpoint. It says that B is the midpoint of AC. Find the length x, or, yeah, AB and AC. So if I look right here, they tell me that B is the midpoint, and so if B is the midpoint, we know that this segment right here, AB, must be congruent to BC. Well, if AB is congruent to BC, that means we know the length of AB equals the length of BC. These, these statements pretty much say the same thing. They're just kind of different notations. They have the same general ideas. And then we have, therefore, we know that 2x minus A, which is, represents the length of AB, must be equal to x plus 17, which is the length of BC. And so then if I just saw my little algebraic equation here, we can subtract two, uh, subtract x from each side, and then I can add 8 to each side. We get that x is 25. So they tell us, we got to be careful and always answer the question here. They said find x, but then they also said find a, b, and a, c. So if I take my 25 and I substitute into a, b, we know a, b equals 2x minus 8. Well, that's just 2 times 25 minus 8. So 50 minus 8 is 42. That's, that's the length of AB. It's 42 because once we found X, we substituted it in, and then we get the actual length of AB is 42. 
And then let's do the same thing for BC. Should get the same length, right? Because uh, we know that AB is congruent to BC, but let, let's just see. So we know BC can be represented with the expression X plus 17, but we've already said that X is 25. 25 plus 17 is 42. So with an X value of 25, we see that both AB and BC would have a length of 42 units, which would make them congruent. So, um, yeah, we're kind of confirming that B is the midpoint with that. Now, let's just work out a couple of problems. we got a few problems just to practice this idea. So, QC and R are collinear in that order. Well, shoot, I'm going to pause, and I'm going to draw a little picture before we go anywhere. So, we have Q, we have C, and we have R in that order. So, you know, QC is 7, CR is X, and QR, the whole thing, is 15. And we're just asked to find X. Well, we know that QC plus CR equals QR, part plus part equals whole. That's our segment addition postulate. So we know 7 plus X equals 15. Well, if I subtract 7 from each side, we get that X equals 8. Since that's all this question asks, we're done right there. Let's jump to the next one. It tells me that M, N, and T are collinear and in that order. So M, N, and T are collinear in that order. If MN equals 3X, NT equals X plus 5, and MT the whole thing, oh, I'm, I ran out of space on writing that. I can put it down here, though. And the whole thing has a length of 7. What is the length of MN? Well, we know that MN plus um, NT equals MT, so therefore we can set up our equation. 3X plus X plus 5 equals 7. Now, I'm not doing a good job of organizing my work, but I have 3x plus x plus 5 equals 7. We can combine our like terms, 4x plus 5 equals 7. And then um, I can subtract 5 from each side, 4x equals 2, and then divide by 4 on each side, and you get that x equals 1 half. Now, we got to be careful. That doesn't mean mn has a length of 1 half. It means that x has a length of 1 half. So you have to go back and find the length of mn, and in M, or MN, excuse me, is 3 times X. So if we know, I'll change colors here. If we know that MN equals 3X, we've just established that X is 1 half, and 3 times 1 half is 1.5. That's going to be your answer. MN has a length of 1.5 units. Two more questions. So on this one, it says find PR. It doesn't outright tell you that M is the midpoint, but due to this marking and this marking, we know that M is the midpoint. That's that marking saying that PM has the same length as MR. And so if we know that PM equals MR, then we know that the that 4x minus 7 must equal 2x plus 1. And so uh, I'm going to skip a lot of the algebra here. Let's see, that would, if I subtracted 2x from each side and added 7 to each side, we'd be there. And then we could divide by 2 on each side and get that x equals 4. we got to be really careful and answer the actual question. The question says find the length of PR, which is the whole thing, okay? Well, now that I know that x equals 4, we can actually figure that out. If I come up here, I know that this would be 4 times 4 minus 7, and this would be 2 times 4 plus 1. So if we see, I can substitute in that 4 and actually calculate the lengths of these segments. That would have a length of 9, and that would have a length of 9, which kind of is a, a side point that confirms that we did our algebra right because our value of x should tell us that this length is the same as this length. But I'll say all that to say PR, the entire segment, has a length of 18. Now, this one tells us that B is the midpoint of AC. So it says find x, a, b, and a, c. Now, this one's a little bit harder. You gotta think a little bit creatively here. So we know that AC is the whole segment. We know that AB is given to us as X plus six, but then we're asked to do um, a whole bunch of math, but we can't really set up our equation because we don't know this length right here. But if we know that B is the midpoint and AB can be represented with X plus six, then we know that B can be represented, or excuse me, BC can be represented with X plus six. If B is the midpoint, then these must have the same length, right? And so if that's the case, we can set up our equation. We know that AB plus BC equals AC. So X plus 6 plus another X plus 6 equals 
3x minus 31. And then it's just a, a bunch of algebra to solve. I can combine like terms and get 2x plus 12 equals 3x minus 31. And then kind of skip in a bunch of algebra here. That would be x. I think that would be 43. So if I subtracted 2x from each side, and then if I added 31 to each side, you should end up with x equals 43. So if you have that x equals 43, you can just substitute it back in here. We, it asks us to find AB. AB equals x plus 6. Well, we just established that x is 43. Therefore, AB has a length of 49. And so then it says, um, we found AB. It wants us to also find AC. Well, if we know AB, I'll kind of pick a different highlighter color here. If we know that AB has this length of 49, we know that AC, the entire thing, must be twice as long because B is the midpoint. So I know that um, I, could say, I could say it like this. I could say that AC equals 2 times the length of AB because the whole segment is going to be twice as long as half the segment. So if I do 2 times 49, you would get that AC has a length of 98.